Do you struggle colouring with alcohol markers? Today I've got five of my favourite tips to share with you. So I've been using a lot of different mediums lately and haven't been doing much alcohol marker colouring and I was getting a little bit rusty. So what I thought I'd do was share five tips to make it just a little bit easier. These are my go-to tips that I usually use when I'm alcohol marker coloring and I've got the artist marker from Altenew that I'm using here today but these tips will help you with any of your markers that you're using. And I have a bonus tip at the end so hold on for that. Now I've already stamped out my images. These are from the Garden Rose kit from Altenew. They're beautiful roses and I did stamp out quite a few of the leaves as well. I'm going to be just focusing on portions of the colouring here today because if I shared it all we'd be here for hours and I have used an alcohol marker friendly ink and this is the permanent black ink from Altenew. I did let it dry for a little bit before I started colouring because I didn't want it to smudge. It doesn't take very long though. I'm colouring my rose petal by petal and often I'll do it this way because I have the ability to make each petal look independent and it does help to kind of get my depth and my shading a little bit more accurate for that petal. I have laid down the light color first and then I'm coming in with the shadow color and I use the shadow color here right where the petals are touching each other at the base of the petal and then I can just come back in and blend out in between the two colors that I'm using. So here's tip number one. We've been coloring each petal separately and that does help to sort of define each petal but let's speed things up by adding a base layer of color and then adding the shading. Let's see how it goes. So it's easy enough to add the base layer. I'm literally just coloring the whole flower image with my lightest color. You kind of do this when you're doing water coloring, when you do the uh, like a wash underneath and it just helps to add all those extra layers. But this is just gonna help me speed along my coloring. I don't always do it this way. Um, because I do like to leave that little bit of white on my petals but I'm going to show you a little tip a bit later on about how to make that work for you. So once I've added the full layer of base color then I can come in with my shading and I'm just working in sections at a time. I find with the alcohol markers they dry back very quickly so if you really do want to blend your colors out you don't want to leave it too long so work in small sections I'm just adding a little bit of the darkest color and over the years I've learned not to overwork it I find you know I can absolutely saturate the paper keep coming back and adding more color and more color and I will do that if I need to but Often what I'm doing is just removing the color that I've already laid down. So basically I'm wasting color, <laughs> which is not good. So try not to overthink it and add some, a small amount of shading, work in smaller areas, and then you can simply drag out the darker color that you've added by using the lighter color beside it. So basically use your lighter color to draw out the shadow that you've laid down but don't go all the way into the shadow area that you've put down because basically you'll lift it up and then you won't have a shadow anymore. <laughs> so try not to get too hung up on which way your light source is coming from because basically petals kind of fall any which way and the light can be coming from anywhere so especially if you're just learning to color or just beginning to color with artist markers or alcohol markers um, maybe just look at the actual image itself 
and think about where the light might be reflecting and maybe put a little less shading in those areas and really just focus your shading on the sections that are um, the, like the inner portions of the petals and maybe somewhere they might be folding over the edges. But you know this is just going to come with practice and over time. Tip number two, add a second layer of colour. With alcohol markers they do dry back lighter so by adding a second layer of colour not necessarily re-blending it in although you can depending on what you're colouring in it just helps add so much depth to your image. Alright so my flower is actually finished but it's not. By adding another layer of colouring really takes the image to the next level. I find that the colours look more natural. The shading that I add now, um, sometimes I don't blend it out. It can actually, if it has a sharper edge, it can look more like a natural shadow on the petal. But just what this does seem to me, it just actually makes the image look so much nicer by having a whole second layer of colour. I know it seems like a lot of work to do but it's worth it. <laughs> and who doesn't relax really colouring? I just totally zone out and it is my favourite place to be. So for me sitting here colouring this beautiful rose, I don't know, it's not hard work at all. My next tip involves stretching your colours. So if you don't have many alcohol marker colours or there's a big difference between the variation of colours that you're going to use then you can use the tip to tip method to stretch out your colours and get that in between colour that you need for the shading. So to add my shadow in here I'm literally just using the darker colour to draw it in and then I can actually pick up some of the darker colour with the lighter marker. So by touching the tip of the darker colour it adds it to the tip of the marker and then I can just drop it into my image where the shadow was and then um, sort of do swiping, flicking motions and that will mean that the darker colour will drop onto my cardstock. How cool is that? So this really gives you a great way of stretching all your markers. You don't have to own every marker in the world although that would be nice. <laughs> but the other thing you can do is actually to get a darker colour is actually lay a second layer of the same colour down and that will also add a shadow. It does take a bit longer to do, you might need to do this a couple of times but I, I really like to use this tip to tip method, it works really well and gives a great result. And my next tip is to add a different shadow colour. So not in the same colour family that you're actually colouring the flower with. I often come in with a grey tone or even a blue purple. For this image I chose to use a blue purple and it does need to be a little bit darker than the image itself. If you choose a colour that's too light it will actually just lift the colour off. So I am adding it, um, you know, I'm not adding a lot at first. I like to sort of look over my image, pick out the areas that I think would have more shadow because you can always add more colour. It's no drama, it's harder to take it away but you can actually take it away and that's my next tip. You can actually lift colour. If you've got a colourless blender and Alton you have one that's um, called zero you can actually lift colour away. It's a great way to fix any little mistakes on your projects as well but also a great way to add highlights. So typically I would be adding highlights uh, if I did each petal coloured separately I would do that as I coloured my petals but this is a really easy way to add highlights later on where you think oh you know that that area probably needs to um, look a little bit lighter. The, tip, the trick is to allow the colour to dry because then you can always come and add a bit more of the colourless blender and take more of the ink away. And I did actually use this dark 
purpley color on the really pale flower as well uh, where I thought I might have gone a bit too heavy-handed with it I just came back in with the lighter pink shade to fix that up but it's pretty amazing how you can get away with using such a dark color on a pale flower to add the shadows who would have thunk that here's my bonus tip and I do this one all the time I restamp my image after I finish coloring and I use a nice crisp pigment ink like the obsidian from Ulta New. It's perfect for this. So when I initially stamped out all of my images I left them in place in the misty and this stamp positioning tool is invaluable for this technique because basically I could just sit my cardstock back in place add an ink that was not compatible with the markers that I used but is a really bold rich black ink and it just redefines all of the outlines on these images. Because this is one of the Craft Your Life project kits it does come with coordinating dies so I die cut all of my images out and I made sure that when I stamped them they were spaced far enough apart that I could actually die cut them all out all out in one pass of my die cutting machine. So I did muck around with my arrangement for a little while. I normally would probably use three flowers in an arrangement but I wanted this to work so I used three leaves and two flowers and I think that it worked pretty well. And then I just simply arranged my little bouquet together on the front of a top fold A2 card. So my sentiment today I decided to keep it really clean and simple and used one of the stamps from the kit and I just stamped that out with some black ink on the front of the card and I just it's such a beautiful <laughs> beautiful and um, simple font. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and enjoyed these tips that I gave you along the way. I really love coloring with alcohol markers and if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below or head to my blog post the link will be in the description below along with all the links to the supplies that I've used lots more photos everything will be at my posts as well and I just want to say thank you so very much for joining me here until next time